You are watching the Kate Fox Show. I'm Kate Fox, and I am here with my co-host, Johnny Rizzo. Hello there. And tonight, Johnny and I are here to share with all of you um, our feelings, M memories. 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 Of Andy. Of yes. Andy. And uh, actually, you know, it goes, everybody has a different memory of Andy. Yes. And a different way they know Andy. Am I right? You are so right. <laughs> and and Andy is known far and oh, wide. A lot of people. Um, you know, sadly <clears throat> we lost him in September yes. and the waves that were felt were all over the world actually. Yeah, they were. You know, everybody knew him. Yes. Everybody. Yes. I mean he had a connection. He was like uh, the Kevin Bacon. <laughs> you, know, you know Kevin Bacon? Yeah. <laughs> he was uh somehow in touch with somebody. Absolutely. Who, yeah, he was he was an awesome guy, man. Loved him to death. You know, every well, everybody who knew Andy loved him. Yes, he really touched a lot of people. So, you know, it's you know, it's it's funny. Someone I'm connected with in th through poetry, who's a veteran. Right. So I don't know how she she sent me a message really? when he passed, 
I don't know if you know this, Andy, who plays the musical, mm-hmm. and it's just the the people that were were sharing and reaching out, as as you know, and mm-hmm. as we've discussed, it was just mind boggling. Yes, and you know it's funny because uh, people I know the, how they know Andy through the drums, through the music. Mm-hmm. You know, I know Andy through this. Cause <laughs> he, he used to come to the bar up here in Changing Times. And he lives in the neighborhood here. He lives in the neighborhood over here. Right, by you. Right. By your studio. And actually, my wife's doing with the school with him. That's right. Right? And uh, we'd hang out at the, the local bar over here, changing times on Lockfield Road. And Andy always brought these in to sell them. <laughs> he would set them up on the bar or on a table. You know, it was awesome. And people bought them, you know? Of course. Yeah, the, these things were so cool, these things. But yeah, so whenever we saw Andy, he's like, oh, Andy's got those things with him. But why? Uh, here we go. Got nervous every second. But <laughs> it's well, and it's true, and it's it's funny because a lot of us, some of us have met him through uh, when he was playing at different, uh, yep. opening <clears throat> different shows, playing different festivals. Yep. Uh, as you said, some people know him from the Drum Center. Yes. Um, always at the at the Dick Sills Diner. All every time we went there, almost, he was there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he's always you know he never saw the guy in a bad mood. He was always thumbs up. Thumbs always up happy and to a see smile. you. Thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, he and was a smile. he. The guy had he had. Not a mean bone in his body, nothing but love from him. Correct. And he was like the sweetest guy you ever want to know. Correct. Am I right? Yeah. He was a great guy. Well, that's why if if you went when, when um, they were having the wake for him after he passed, you couldn't get in the room. Right. There were so many people I have never seen anything like yeah. it. Yeah. I, th- I think we were standing in line for 30 to 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Just to get up to pay our respects. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that tells you something. It, it, it does tell you something. But um, hey, if anybody wants to give us a call, you got a story about Andy, man. Please feel free. Absolutely. We we have some phone calls coming in tonight, right? We have. Yes, we do. We do. We we have some people that some big uh, again, names all over the world. John Macalusa from Italy is calling in tonight. Yes, and he he, he for those of you who do not play drums and do not. Aren't aware he's he's been earning a living as a drummer since forever. Since high school, <laughs> I went to high school with John Macaluso. I went to junior high with him. Oh my god! I took him out for drinks when he became the drummer of TNT, and we went to Huntington and ripped up Huntington. So, me and Johnny go back a long time. Great guy, amazing drummer, and I know he taught. I had something to do with teaching Andy playing the drums as well. Wow! So yeah, wow! So he's calling in eight thirty. Looking forward to talking to him. He's got a lot of new music coming out as well. But he's calling in, and we got Rob calling in. Uh, yeah, Rob, Rob Noxious mm-hmm. uh, from Kill Code, right. from My World. Right. Um, he had wanted to be here this evening, but said he couldn't. And um, so he wanted to share some some thoughts on Andy. Right. Um, and I know Dennis from the Drum Center, yep. who everyone knows Dennis. Everybody knows Dennis. <laughs> Everybody knows. If you're a drummer on Long Island, or even off or, Long Island, you know and, who Dennis yeah. is. You absolutely do. The drum center was awesome. Uh, but anyone, if you have something you want to share, you know, the outpouring that we've seen, the outpouring that we've received when we decided we were going to do this show right. um, is is just crazy. Right. Now, you know what? This is you know, this is a show about remembering Andy, not to bring anybody down. You know what? Because he wouldn't want everybody, because Andy was always happy. Always. Always, like I said, with his thumbs up and, you know, Great memories, you know. Give us a shout, man, if you want to talk about it. Now, hey, Ken, Ken's out there. Uh, Ken Henderson, he's watching the show. Barbara. Hi, Ken. Uh, and you know, uh, he has a lot of great memories. I mean, people have to have stories about him. And I'm upset because I know I took a lot of pictures with him. I, I can't find any. I couldn't find a one of you. I could couldn't not find one of me, one. right? It's, yeah, nowhere. How many I, times I saw him at the rail, even at the diner, you know, changing times? I think he came to my benefit as well that I had at Katie's. I believe he was there. But uh, yeah, he did a lot. He did a lot for the uh, music community, man. Absolutely, he really did, and uh, really special, special guy. He really was. So uh, we know what time Rob's going in. Or? Um, he's going to be a little bit later tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think actually, what what I I think we should do is share some thoughts from his father. Okay. Okay. Um, because um, Andy's father shared um, this with us, and right. we'd like to share it with you. My son was born in 1965 while I was still in the Army. My wife was living with my parents in Flushing at the time. When Andy was just over one year old and wasn't walking yet, we started with doctors, and he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. At age three, we bought our first house in East Meadow. 
From an early age, Andy was very interested in motorcycles, and his hero was Evil Knievel. At about 10, he also began drum lessons. At 12 or so, he also became interested in the bagpipes. He, was always, he always enjoyed the company of adults as they seemed to be more considerate and patient with him. Andy joined the Northport Pipe Band in the early 80s after we moved to Huntington. After a couple of years practicing with them, he was being excluded from their events because of his inability to march in step at parades. He was very hurt by this, but it didn't stop him from continuing to play. In the 70s, he began going to the Long Island Drum Center and became a regular there for over 40 years, helping out and playing at their drum concerts. The Drum Center is in the process of making a DVD called Andy's Challenge. In the 80s, he was diagnosed with Williams Syndrome. People with this challenging syndrome are noted to be musically inclined and are noted for their loving nature. I never heard him say a negative word about anyone except for a kid who bullied him as a child. In 2000, Andy's sister moved to Italy, and for the next 13 years, Andy spent two to three months each year with us in Italy, where he was every bit as loving to our friends there. Additionally, we would go on a cruise each year where Andy would play bagpipes and drums throughout the week. He loved the cruising and made many friends, which he kept in touch with. At the end of a cruise, we would hear dozens of passengers yelling goodbye to Andy. He had over 2,700 friends listed on Facebook. <laughs> Andy was. I a, believe that. Uh, it's it's. I do too. Um, Andy was a regular at Chicago's Pizza Pub and Sergeant Pepper's until they closed. More recently, with the advent of Uber, he was set free in his ability to travel. He began going to the Rail, Katie's, and Napper Tandy's, and the Mall in Smithtown, and loved every minute of it. He also loved the Green Lawn Firemen's Fair and the East Northport Festival, and all his friends there. The day Sunday before he passed, he went to Manorville to see his friend do a motorcycle jump. At home, Andy would spend his day on the computer or watching many DVDs. In the evenings when there was a storm, he would film the lightning, which he did over many years. I have hundreds of DVDs of lightning. Then there was his nesting doll collection. He has hundreds in his collection, and everywhere he went, he would be looking for them. I can tell you that five rooms in our home are filled with his things. He looked for ways to make money to support his hobbies and would try to sell dolls and other things. I can tell you that I had the job of limiting his activities as he would always want to be with his friends, like every day. Sometimes I had to be the bad guy. The last thing Andy said to me the night before he passed was, I love you, Dad, to which I replied, I love you too, Andy. Andy was a major part of our lives for 54 years and went everywhere we went. Our home and our lives are empty without him. Thank you again for your friendship to him. Wow. Wow. That's your girl. It's touching. You know, it's it's uh, touching. And, and, you know, just the, the family, too. The, the, they look like they're a very close family. Yes. And they did a lot of things together, and they, they went to a lot of places together, which is awesome. You know, and uh, like I said, Andy was always a very loving guy. And I, I saw him, I got a hug. And got, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had, it's funny, the, the first time, and I'm not going to say I met him, but the first time that we almost met, um, I had never been to the rail before. Right. Um, I was meeting a friend. <clears throat> I was going to see a concert there. And he just kept looking at me and smiling. Right. Looking at me and smiling. And, and at first I was like, well, why is this, you know, why is this guy smiling at me? And then I figured it out. And I realized that he smiles at everyone because yeah. he loves everyone. Yep. He does. I, I met him, oh God, the Comac Roller Rink back in the day. <laughs> I mean, that, that was the hangout. And that's where uh, I met Andy back then. Yeah, and, and Chicago Pizza Pub. I wish that place was still around. That was the best. That that's place wild. was the best. Come on, guys. You guys have a story out there, man. Give us a shout, right. man. Everybody knew Andy. Everybody had a story. I see a name here I haven't seen in a long time. Nikki Romano. What's up, Nikki? How are you? I haven't talked to you in a long time. Nikki, uh, I go way back with Nikki as well. Oh. I mean, so Nikki knew me since she's maybe when I was like eight, nine, I'm going to go. Wow. A long time ago, right? So, hi, Nikki. How you doing? But, um, yeah, there's so many stories about, about Andy. Absolutely. And, and, you know, talking about, you know, John Macaluso... Yeah, famous drummer Liberty DeVito when yeah. when he had passed, 
um, posted something on Facebook, you know, expressing his sadness. I mean, just you, you didn't realize just how many people, and, and I know we'll keep saying it, but right. it's true. It keeps, oh, that one knew him too. That one yep. knew him too. That one knew him too, you oh, know? Yeah. Yep. And um, I know the first drum clinic we went to at the Long Island Drum Center. He was always there. You know, everyone was kind of looking for him. Yeah. You know, and, and Dennis made a lovely speech, of course, because mm-hmm. he was such a part of those events. Right. You know, but it was just, you always... He was always there. Yep. He was always there. Yeah, and I'm a drummer myself, and whenever I would record something or say something about the drums or put a picture of my drums on Facebook, he was always the first one to say something. <laughs> and, and I knew it, too. You'd wait for it, all right? There you go, Andy. <clears throat> you know, keep rocking, keep going. He just said, keep going, you know? And, uh, yeah, and I, he actually invited me to his house to see his drums. I never got a chance to get over there, and I really regret that because he had a monster. <laughs> Oh, How that kid is set. gorgeous. I mean, I mean, look, look <laughs> what do you say about this thing, man? Right? I mean, really? You want to hear him play a little bit? Yeah, I think we should. All right, check this out. Did he rock that shit or what? It was, it was <clears throat> crazy. Yeah, he was definitely a good drummer. And um, he, he's one of those drums that you, I would love to go try to see. Was he ever in a band? I don't think he was ever... I, you know like, what? I'm not sure. But, uh, um, I don't uh, know. Can Rob someone answer? Call? Yeah, he's, he's confirming the number to call. Either or. Either or. Either or, Rob. Give us a shout out. Either, either one of those numbers. Both phone lines are open. So give us a shout. 877-917-5263. Or just call my number, 631-560-3416. Now you've got Johnny's number. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I don't want to get a phone call from you saying, you know, your, your, your warranty is expiring on your car. <laughs> You're going to get that anyway. I know. Oh, I got, okay, that's all I get. <laughs> every day. Every day. And you know what they do? They take your phone number and they try to make it look like you know the number. Like, like let's say I call you and they'll take my number and, add, oh, yes. and switch the number so you think oh, maybe yeah. it's me or... Oh no! I've gotten phone yeah. calls from my neighbor across the street from their from their number. Right. Oh, okay. So, I, yeah, I know. Oh, it's so. craziness. Wow, <laughs> it's crazy. It's stuff. craziness. But uh, here we are, waiting for Rob to give us a shout, and uh, we'll kill code. Yes, yes. And you heard you heard some part of their song to start. Yes. Good stuff there. And uh, didn't I put your thing in here? I did. You want to say something about this? What do I want to say about? It? Oh. The Kate Fox Show is sponsored proudly by Life on Mars Beauty brand. Check them out. All organic, clean cosmetics, no chemicals. I got to try it. You do? Yeah. A little blush. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, at 8.30, I believe, John McAloose was calling in. Yes. And we're going to have, uh, who else calling in? Dennis was going to call was calling in. in. And um, I know that um, Russ Zudo might call in if he can. He had hoped to he's re- re- he's recording. Correct. And you know, like I said, you know, uh, Andy's been everywhere in the music industry. You know, a lot in Long Island. Every every band knows him. You know, just it, the neighborhood bars knew him. He had a, something, something to offer everybody. Everybody. You know what I'm saying. Either the drummer, the, the pipes. And he was awesome with the pipes. Yes. I mean, he opened what? How many shows? How many festivals? Yes. Yes. With the pipes. Everywhere. Yeah. Wow. 
He's going to be missed. He really is. And uh, But he'll always be remembered. Never forgotten. No, and always no. with a smile. Always with a smile. So, um, hold on. What else have we uh, showed people? what? Here? Evil Knievel, you who? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the nesting dolls. I know I'm forgetting something else. The nesting dolls. <laughs> Now, these things, I believe that you open them up and there's smaller ones inside, yes, right? Yes. They're all the way down to like little? Yes. Yeah, I remember those things. Yeah, Andy was definitely, um, you know, here we go. Hi, you're on the air with the Kate Fox Show. Whoop. Hey, what? Rob, hold on one second. Yep, go ahead, Rob. Go ahead. Wait, oh. My my sound guy is trying to fix the sound. Yeah, I don't know why. The audience can't hear you. We can hear you coming through the phone, but the audience. There we go. There we go. Go ahead. Okay, what's up, guys? What's Hi, up, Rob? Rob? How you doing? All right. All right. It sounds great so far. Um, and what do you say about this guy? Yeah, what can you say? You know, you guys spent a lot of time with them, yeah. right, over at the rail. I know that. And uh, he really loved Kilco. I know that. Big fan. Yeah, you know, honestly, um, he, he was always he was a big supporter of everybody, as you know, but he, he was actually a pretty big My World head. He When he first heard My World over there, really? he was blown away. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think maybe because it's a little bit more, like, crazier. <laughs> okay. But, um, <laughs> maybe. As a drummer, he was really into that. Wow. wow. That That's really stuff. cool. Yeah. Good stuff. So he would always ask me what's going on with them. First and foremost, really, it was pretty wild. Does Rob have a great radio voice or what? Yeah, he does. He got... <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the one that, that, that had him show me a picture of his, his kit. Well, that's the other thing with him. So, like, you know, he would always be hanging around and he would have his, um, his iPad with him. And he yeah. loved showing off his huge drum set that he collected <laughs> all those years, which, you know, I heard a little segment of what you were saying Um about how he's got like five rooms in the house and of all their stuff, uh, all his stuff. But um, I wonder what they're doing with that. I, I would imagine it's probably still sitting right in the same spot. Oh, I'm sure. I would too. And nobody's touched it and no. nobody will. Um, but he loved showing anybody who walked in the door who never saw it. <laughs> oh, well, he was show and tell time all the time with that. That yeah. is definitely something to be proud of. I mean, you know, I got a drum kit that uh, I, I love, but nothing like that thing. You know what I mean? That no, I mean, he, he collected that for many years, obviously, and what's really cool about it, you know, not only what I always found intriguing about it, and this is kind of like the, the type of person he was, um, but, like, not only is it a big, huge drum kit, say, like, Neil Peart, you sit back there and there's a bunch of stuff. He right. had stuff out in the front of it that people could walk up and play with him. Yes, I remember. So it was, like, inviting for people to come over and play with him, you know? Right. So, um I always found that pretty unique, and that's kind of the type of person he was. He was just always gracious and open and wanted to, you know, hang out and talk. And just a, a sweetheart of a guy, and it's a tragedy that he's not here anymore. Yeah, he was, a, he was yeah. innocent, is what he was. Oh. An innocent yeah, I mean, guy. Honestly, I, I always kind of looked at him as, a, as like an inspiration. I've told many people that. Sure. He just, you know, with all the crazy stuff people go through in the world, and life is always a pain in the butt, and this, that, the other thing. In a crazy world, he was always happy. He always greeted people with a hug. He was never, right. I mean, even even think of the stuff he was ailing. He he just never had any negativity at all. And if a guy like that can go through life, right, you know, being happy every day, I mean, we're we're all a bunch of idiots. You know, you, you got that right. Absolutely, up. absolutely. Yeah. You got that right. You so, know, and he was a yeah. hell of a drummer too. Yeah. So you know, I really you know met. Andy, when we started doing um, the open mic jam down at the rail, I may have met him before, but he right. would come down to that all the time. And, you know, I always made sure he got a spot to get up and play. And, you know, not for nothing, people who didn't really know him that well, who were like on the list waiting to play, to be like, well, why is he going to get to play before me? <laughs> yeah, well. And then, like, he would get up and blow their heads off. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And then they, some people would be like, well, now I don't even want to play. You know what I mean? Because they, they sounded like idiots even questioning the fact that I was letting them get up there. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, he always had a spot. And, um, 
Yeah, and God forbid, you know, you didn't get, he would always find a way to break, break, break into a drum solo. Even, <laughs> you know, if he was playing a song with everybody, it, it, somewhere in the middle of that, he would get his little oh, yeah. drum solo in. And he shredded, it. he was great. You could tell, you know. Then I stumbled across a bunch of older stuff, like on YouTube of him playing from years ago, you know, before his motor skills and stuff were really slowing down. He was, he was a monster. He's a great player. Oh, yeah. Great player. Great person. You know, what a hell of a great personality. You know, nothing but love. So all he had was love inside. And, uh, yeah, and all the bartenders always loved having him around. He'd be sitting at the bar talking with them. I mean, you know, Jess and Christine and all of them, Evelyn, yeah. they love him to death. You oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Wow. Well, that, you know what? A lot of great memories. Yeah. And they'll always have them. And you know what? That family went through devastation with this, but they'll have the memories that they'll never lose and forget. Correct. And, you know. and uh, you know, just from what I read from his dad and what was expressed from his sister and, and his dad when we were going back and forth with them to, to get some pictures, they're so appreciative of, right. of, of all of this, of just people sharing pictures, people sharing memories. It means so much to them to see just how much Andy was loved. Right. Yeah, you know, I think they kind of had an idea, but obviously when, when tragedy like this comes up, I think by the time it came to the services, they were a little bit taken back by the fact that, I mean, it was so so many people yeah. that, that were touched by him. And I mean, I remember he, he, he took everything he did really seriously, you know. He would call those little things he was doing, like going to Katie's for Tuesday nights and going to the rail on <laughs> Thursday <laughs> nights. Yep. Going to the mall for, you know, shopping for all this stuff. But like, I just remember he would pull in he would always be at the rail before I would get there, and I would always get there pretty early to get set up and get ready for the guests to come. But, like, he would come off a bus from Smith Haven Mall, oh get dropped off right near the rail, right. and he would always bring us Cinnabons oh. from, from the mall. And, I mean, he would bring a bag of them, and, like, they're great, and everybody wants to play. Nobody wants to eat, like, three of them, you know what I mean? So, like, he would always bring <laughs> way too many of them, but, like, every time, he never forgot about anybody, he would just bring, he's just an, an amazing person, like I said, it, it, it's it's very sad the day I saw that. I was, I forget where it was, but I, I think it was Lenny I had posted a picture with him and, you know, was upset and said, you know, right. God bless his soul, this, that, and I was like, no way, this yes. couldn't happen, and then the phone call started coming because people knew that I knew him pretty well, which, like, a lot of people did, but they were like, what happened, what happened, I'm like, I really don't know. Yeah, well, well I found out by, by something you had posted, so yeah, I didn't realize it until you had put up a picture, and that's how I found out, too. Yeah, I mean, he was my buddy. I wish I could say I knew him all my life, I didn't, um... I only knew him for like the last four or five years, probably, but I mean, what an inspiration and what a great guy. And then now, you know, again, in tragedy, it stinks that you meet people this way, but now I have met his family. Um, yes. And, you know, you can see he came from really good people. Um, it's really sorry for them to have to deal with this, but right. um, I don't know what else to say. You know what? What else can we say? He was a great guy, and that's how we all want to remember him. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, listen, we got a call coming in from Italy right now. Okay, Rob? So okay. we want to get back to you, okay, buddy? All right, man. Hey, it was great talking to you. You too, Thanks, buddy. Rob. I hope to see you guys soon. Be good, okay? Bye-bye. Yeah, you too. Okay, okay. Hello, you're on the air, motorcycle. <laughs> Hi, you're on the Kate Fox Show. <laughs> hey. Who do we got here? Johnny Boy. Johnny Macaluso, how are you, sir? Oh, my God, how are you, man? I'm doing great. How are you doing? You, I see you're doing great. Congratulations on the show, man. Thank you. Thank like you. Mayhem Radio. Yeah, that's right. The Monday nights. Right. It's huge. <laughs> it's how, how long have you been doing it? Uh, it's going to be three years in uh, January. Three years. Three years, yeah. Where the hell was I, man? I don't know, but I did. <laughs> when was the last time I seen you, Nick? When was the last time I seen you? Because you know what, you were here. I didn't know you were here, and then you left, and I, and I saw you were here. I was like, "Damn, John was here." And I got to see him. That was like last year. No, no, I wasn't there. I just, it was like a Facebook memory thing. Maybe I shared it. People were like, "Hey, man, you didn't call me." Oh, I that was that was. <laughs> yeah, I'd oh. never do that to you, man. Oh. 
I don't know. I love you, man. I can't wait to see you again. He's got some great music coming out, too. I can't wait to hear. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Good oh, yeah, stuff, you, ju- you just finished, right? You just finished something. Yeah, I was touring with Jennifer Batten, uh, the guitarist for Michael Jackson and Jeff Beck. And we're actually driving in the van together. We were talking. She's amazing. Uh-huh. And I said, so your first gig was Michael Jackson and your second gig was Jeff Beck. <laughs> And now your career's really cooking because you're driving around with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but she's amazing, man. She's jo- amazing. Johnny's a pisser, man. I'm going to ask you to tell a quick story because it's about drums and Andy loved playing the drums. Yes. Can you just tell the story real Andy quick? Andy passed away, man. Yes. Can, can you tell the story? Rest in peace, brother. That's right. Yes. When you were playing with Ingve, right? And tell uh-huh. a story when you were playing with Ingve Mountstein. Can you just tell a story about the, the little horses you had on your bass drums? Oh, my God. You remember the horse story? Yeah, like, <laughs> I got a habit when I go to truck stops, especially my drinking days. I would just buy people stupid gifts, man. Like, you know, and come on the bus and give somebody, like, slime or, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> a, 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 my dog is named Mooney. After Keith Moon. Mooney. Back to that. Yeah, so... Um, so I went on, I went, uh, we were on the tour bus with Ingrid, right? and I got off the bus and we went to some truck stop in like the Midwest, and I saw like a cowboy and Indian set, and it was really cool, man, it had the TP, it had the stagecoach, even a campfire, I'm like, this is cool, who am I going to give it to? So, uh, you know, it was one of those big tours, we were all partying like crazy, so I didn't give it to anybody, I forgot about it, and in the morning I woke up with the cowboy and Indian set in my bunk, I'm like, what could I do, what stupid thing could I do with this thing, so I told my roadie, I want, I had two kicks at the time, two bass drums, right, I said, I want to make a big, let's see if anybody notices this, I want to make a big battle scene on my bass drums, the Cowboys are on the right bass drum, the Indians are on the left, and the middle would be the Grand Canyon. Oh. So can you hook it up for me? Yeah, no problem. Mm-hmm. So there's like 20 Cowboys. It was like a lot. It was a big kit, you know? We put the Indians, we put the TP. It was a big battle scene. And we're on like maybe the 10th or 11th song. There's like 30 songs in the set. So I guess it's the beginning of the set. And um, Ingrid, he's playing and he's cooking. He's playing his ass off. And I see he comes up to me and he's pissed. He's like, what the hell? He's screaming at me, and he's looking at the Cowboys and Indians. And I'm laughing my ass off, and it's hard for me to play and laugh, because the <laughs> shit is very intense. And I'm dying, I, I go, I can't believe this. I'm playing with Malmsteen, and he's pissed at me about the Cowboys and Indians. So as he's playing, he doesn't make a mistake the whole time, but he's got the big Cowboy boots, and he's kicking the Indians off, and then he goes to the Cowboys, and nobody knows what the hell is going on, man. Oh my God. And it's like... A, maybe like a five minute thing and I'm laughing and I go if anybody knew what is really happening they would lose it and he couldn't get the stage coach off oh my and God. he's kicking and he's freaking out and it was like maybe half a song and he finally got the stage coach off I think he fired me that night too he, he like fires everybody every night but oh. in the morning he got the gig again oh my but, uh, God. It, was, it was pretty wild it was pretty funny like stupid stories like that uh, you know, right. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, that's a stagecoach story. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, what do you, you have, I'm sure you have some stories about Andy because uh, didn't you work with him for a little while? Or? Yeah, yeah. And, well, I was Andy's teacher for a while, man. Wow. It's weird. It's got to be strange without Andy because when you do, when you're from Long Island and you go to drum clinics, and uh, Andy is like, he's like, always there. It's Everyone. like life without Andy at a drum clinic, you right. know, he's always there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, so I can't even remember when I met him. I'm talking like way back when yeah. I just remember he was obsessed with Joe Franco, like everybody, right. every drummer in Long Island. Sure. He used to put the thumbs up and go, Joe Franco, <laughs> double bass. Yeah. I'll never forget that, man. And he was a great kid, man. He's a great guy, like a great hearted person. And, a lot of people don't know, but he can really play, man. Yeah, he can. We I heard, heard him. him for about... What? We heard him before, yeah. I put up a video of him playing. It's great. Yeah, I mean, I tried him for like a year and a half, and he had speed, and he had power, and I tried to tame him down because he was very much into the drum solo, you know? So we'd be doing lessons, and I'm trying to teach him a power diddle, and he'd be cooking like on 30 second or triple on the feet. But I started to like calm, really calm him down and have him really learning and he was getting really good man uh he had killer chops and uh, i i mean there's nobody more obsessed with drumming he would 
that was him. That was his life. Drums, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, Until he, the bagpipe came out. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a whole new story. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You know, uh, we, you mentioned the drum clinics. We went to um, somebody else, you know, Tommy McGuckin and I went to the first drum clinic. Oh, Tommy. Yes, Tommy. Well, hey, say hello. <laughs> He's listening, so he hears you saying hello, I think. Uh, good, uh, yeah, another one of my students, a great, great, great guy and a great drummer. That's cool. Yes. Hello, Tommy. And, and we went to, to um, see Virgil. That was the first drum clinic we went to, Virgil Donati. And we uh-huh. were sitting there and we're just looking for Andy and he's not there. Wow. You know, and, That's and, weird. and it was just, it didn't feel right. You know, Dennis made a nice speech about him and it just, there was something missing that night. It was a great clinic, but there was something missing. Yeah. That's true. He was part of it. It's like a staple. He was always there. And just, uh, uh, that, it's sad. It's sad. So when did he pass away? He passed away in uh, the beginning of September. Oh, man. And how old was he? He, he was born in 65. Yeah. So he, oh, he was older than me. Yeah, he was older than us. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, we 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 didn't think he was even older than me, and I'm an old lady. I know he so. went. To, I went to high school with Dawn. <laughs> she was old. He was the highest grade in Dawn. Yeah, so yeah, he was definitely older. Than oh me. man, it's, it, it's really sad, man. It's really sad. But um, uh, it, it, a cool thing about Andy was like um, I remember when I first met him, he was saying he wanted drum lessons, and he would tell me. I got a 32-piece drum set. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm, you, you know, when some, when, when you, you know, when you're a kid, you say you got a, a, a 20-piece kit. It's kind of like a snare, two toms, a floor tom, a bass drum, and then you count your cymbal stand as another piece. Yeah. So like, you know, I got a 12-piece kit, but it's really like three cymbal stands. Right, right. I went to his house. He had a 32-piece drum set. <laughs> it was really bad, man. Yeah. It was like two kicks. He had octobands. He had like there was stuff hanging from the ceiling, symbols. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> Andy, man, I can't believe it. Yeah, it's very sad. Look at that thing. There it is. It's wild. I got the picture of his drums up right now. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was, I remember he had a uh, Thomas Superstar. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Superstar kid. Yes, yes, I believe that's wow, what he said. Man. Good stuff, man. Rest, rest in peace, man. He was a good dude, a really good dude. Yeah, he was. Um, and a great Popeye imitation. Remember the Popeye imitation? I don't remember that, no. no. <laughs> I don't remember that. <clears throat> oh, yeah. He had it down, man. He had it down. Oh, man. I think he was been playing you. I remember I used to go to his house. No, he's, he's not here. He for lived, a long time. He lived by us, I right? believe. I thought he lived in East Northport with us. Maybe it was. Yeah. Maybe it was, man. Yeah. Shit, man. Well, you had students That's all over the place. Yeah, I, it was like, uh, there's this dude in Jersey. It's a great idea, man. I, I wish I thought of it at the time. He's a, a drive-around teacher. So he's got like a drum kit in a van, like wow. an old 70s Chevy van. Wow. And he's got it bolted down. So he goes to your house, you jump in his truck. Wow. And he gives you drum lesson and he splits and he goes to the next student. That's, I think that's a cool idea, that's man. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild stuff. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's wild stuff. drums, man. Uh, so when you come back yeah, to the... That's sad about Andy, man. I, I'm good. It's good you guys are doing this. And, it, it, uh, you know, he deserves it. Anybody who plays drums and, and yeah, he deserved it, man. Yeah. He's like, you know, and what a good, I mean, there's not, not a bad bone in his body. He's a great person. Yep. Yes. Yep. Nicest guy you ever want to meet, man. Nicest guy. Always with a hug, a thumbs up, put his head on your chest. Yep. All the yep. time. Yep. Love always. Not oh, getting that. Always a thumbs up. And at the end, it always ended with Joe Franco. <laughs> 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 He's my hero too, Franco. We, we had the same hero. There you go. There you go. So when are you coming back to the States? You know, I was going to come back uh, in September. I had the whole thing planned. Right. And then, uh, and then, you know, and then, like I booked the record and I'm like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delay this thing and I'm, I'm going to tell the guy I'll do the record when I come back. Right. But in this, in these, I got to be honest with you, in these times, these times are very crazy for musicians and, 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 and work and everything. Right. And I said, you know what, don't, don't risk it. Do the damn album because you don't know if the guy's going to get someone else. That's true. So I ended up not coming back. <laughs> That's and true. I think it was smart. It, you know, yeah. things are crazy these days, man. Yeah, I would like to, you send me some music so I can play on the shows. Well, 
Yeah, man. I mean, uh, you know what's a great record? Um, Michael Romeo, War of the Worlds, Part One, and it's the, he's the guitar player from Symphony X, Mike Romeo. Okay. And I did his, uh, I did two, I did his two solo albums. The one came out uh, last year, and it's a killer, man. It's a great wow. record. So maybe play some songs. One is called um, Ob- Oblivion. Yeah, Oblivion is a cool one. And another song is called Jin, D-J-I-N-N. And, and it, it's a sick record, man. A sick record. I'll definitely check it out. You, you like it. No doubt. I will definitely yeah. look into that. No doubt. But, uh, Johnny, hey, you still playing with that band, man? The recording <laughs> thing you did? Johnny, the sad part about what that is... He got kicked out. Did he get kicked out of him? <laughs> the, the sad part about that Johnny is... Martin. We're still, we're still <laughs> trying to finish those same three songs. My part's done. These guys... <laughs> That we're still trying to finish those same three songs. My part, I swear, everyone's so busy. It's been three years. It's almost done. Holy shit. Almost. It was good, man. Yeah, it's great stuff, man. Good stuff. I can't wait for it to come out. Yeah, but I got to wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've been waiting a long time, man. Holy shit. And it'll be classic by the time it comes out. <laughs> Funny man, yeah. So where, where is your show? Where do you do this from? I got, it. I do it right in my uh, my house. I got a studio in my house. That's nice ah, cool. Yeah. Next time you're in town, you got to come by and and uh, do the show with me. I'm coming February. I'm planning it. I hope it happens. But uh, all right, I think February, February, or March. I'm definitely coming home. I got a DVD coming out. I'm doing a, a, for once a drum DVD. Excellent. Right when nobody does DVDs. DVDs anymore. They're like obsolete. That's when I decide to do one. There you go. You know? <laughs> Maybe you can but teach me when, for when one. When I get it out, I want to go touring everywhere, doing clinics and stuff. There you so go. I'm definitely going to be in New York and Jersey and, you know. Oh, Excellent. That's great. Definitely, Excellent. man. Excellent. Yeah. You teach me things, too. You never yeah, taught me. Man. You taught everybody I know. Good to see you again, buddy. Yeah, I know, man. We and you go way back, bro. Right? Spalling. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go back to the ski trip, man. <laughs> I just said spalling. <laughs> The, the notorious ski trip. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Was, Unbelievable. Yeah, but back to Andy. I mean, Andy was, uh, you know, think about it. He was more famous than anybody yes. in, the drum, in, in the drumming world in Long Island. Everybody knew Andy. If he had a band, he'd be uh, kicking ass, man. Every, everybody knew Andy. He, everybody he'd be famous. Knew. Yes, he was. He was he, at his huh? wake. You couldn't get close to the place at his wake. Yeah, it it was it, it, you had to wait in a huge line just to pay your respects to really? him. Really? Yeah, yes. it was wild. You couldn't oh get in God, the door. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yes. Oh yeah, it, it was it was it was that wow. Crazy. Yeah, he was very loved. He was very loved on Long Island. No but doubt. That's really great to hear. Yeah. That's really great to hear, man. Oh yeah. Wow. Very yeah. loved. And, oh. uh, and I was honored to know him. Oh man! Yeah, so. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing this. Really, yeah, really. Yeah, that's thank a, you. a beautiful thing you did. I'm glad you called him in. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, I'm going to see you both when I get back. We'll definitely keep in touch. Anything I could do for the show, man? Tell me. Uh, of course. Thank you, man. We appreciate it. We'll talk off the air. I'll talk to you during the week. All right, buddy. Bravo, bravo. Okay, I'll talk to you both soon. You got thank it. You. Thank, thank you so thank you, much, John. John. And hail Andy, man. Hail Andy. Hail him. Beautiful, brother. You, you know, respects to Andy. Rest in peace, brother. That's right, man. That's yes. right. Amen. Thanks again, buddy. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Ciao, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. He's a great guy, John McAlusso. He's, he's, a, he's, yeah. You know, I, I'll tell you a quick story, man. Growing up, you know, with him, and when I was in, like, like uh, elementary school playing drums, and it was, I, I was a good drummer, right? And everyone in school knew me as being a drummer. Then you go to the, the junior high, okay? Now all these elementary schools meet, and now John Macalusto's in the picture now. So all you heard was John Macalusto's name. Oh, I'm better than that guy. I'm better than that guy, right? So they had a clinic at the school in Bar Road. Oh, wow. They had a clinic, a drum clinic, and uh, they're like, is anybody out there want to come up and you know, do some drums? So my friend's like, oh, I get up there. And I go, Johnny Mac, Mac, Michael. And my friend's like, go, go, go. He got up there. I'm like, oh, let's hear this guy. He got up there and beat the living piss out of these drums. And I was like, damn. <laughs> and then he came to my house, right? And I had my drums set up. He played my drums like they were never played before. I was like, all right, you're good. You got me, buddy. You got me. You're the winner. So, yeah, John McAlusso is, is, is great, great drummer. 
And it has to be on it. Tommy has to be on it to be taught by John Macaluso. Oh, yeah. Tommy I mean, he, Tommy yeah. has had, you know, spoken about uh, John Macaluso yeah. multiple times. I never had the honors. I never was. had the honors of being taught by John. I mean, wow. yeah. No, never had the honors. But I, I would definitely take it. You know, I don't really play now like I used to. Well, maybe you should. Yeah, it's just. Maybe uh, you should. Um, what can because I don't have it in front of me. What was the call in number again? Eight seven seven nine one seven five two six three. I had it up on the screen. There it is, right there. Give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. We got a story about Andy. We're here, and uh, yeah. And it's it's wonderful to. I, I'm seeing comments. You know, from from Frank from Craving Strange. God bless Andy. Well, we all miss him dearly. Yep, yep. Got a call. You're on the Kate Fox show. Hello. Hello. Who are we speaking to? Uh, my name is <clears throat> Mike Passeretti. I'm Andy's uncle. Oh, hey, Hi, Mike. Mike. Thank you for calling. Okay. I just uh, thought if they were collecting stories, I had a quick one. Go ahead. We'd yeah, love to hear it. it. Okay. Uh, back in the day, uh, back in the day, we started uh, going on family cruises. Right. Can, and, can you uh, lower your radio behind you or lower your phone? Yeah, okay. Sure, yeah. just a second. Yeah, we started going on family cruises. The whole family would go. Uh, Andy's mom and dad, his sisters, Andy, um, me and uh, my wife and, and my parents. And, and one of the things that happened there that was just very typical of Andy, <laughs> um, they had a talent show going on. Oh, nice. So Everybody would get up and they would do their little thing and the people would clap and, uh, you know, wasn't that something? <clears throat> and then Andy walked out on the stage and before he even sat down, the whole audience is yelling, Andy, Andy, Andy. <laughs> and I'm like, we've been only on this shit for a day. How does everybody know him already? I, I can't tell you how many times uh, we were going to get together for dinner. We show up at the uh, dining room, and he's sitting with a bunch of people having dinner already. <laughs> uh, getting off the ship, it was like you couldn't get off because everybody had to say goodbye to Andy. Wow. Uh, but Who was like that kind of person? In the past, um, he was just that kind of a guy. Uh, he loved everybody. Everybody loved him. And he would just cruise around. And like I said, every time I turned around, he's eating dinner with some more strangers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, you know it was that it was always a a, a trip with him. Uh, I'm I was his godfather. Oh, okay. Um, he used to call me his fairy godfather, oh. and he had a fairy godmother too. I love it. <laughs> but uh, you know, like everybody's saying, he was just a sweet guy. Yeah. Um, a, a number of years ago, I moved down to Florida, and uh, I would run up and visit and bring him back with me for a week or ten days. Wow. And uh, he he just loved it. Um, there's a place down here in Naples called Tin City, which is a a big long building full of shops, uh, and it's almost like a carnival atmosphere. And he would be wandering around buying shirts and buying gifts. He could never come down here without buying a gift for everybody he knew back home. I mean, it was like half the time he was here it was a shopping trip. Wow. But he. But he just had that kind of heart, you know, uh, yeah. like like everybody has been saying. He loved everybody. Everybody loved him. And, uh, you know, I I, uh, I thought I was pretty heavy on Facebook. I have 196 friends. <laughs> I went on his website. He's got 2,970-some-odd <laughs> friends on Facebook. You know, <laughs> but that's that's just who he was. Uh all righty. Well, I'll uh, I'll get off and see if anybody else has a, uh, anything else to say. But uh, he he certainly will be missed. Uh, right, you yeah. know, we all uh, the family. We all have a, a big hole in our hearts uh, that he used to fill. Yes. But uh, like the gentleman said, rest in peace, brother. That's right. Thank yes, you so much. Amen. Till we meet again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Okay, my pleasure. Take care. Bye bye. Now. Bye bye. Wow. Well, that, that, no, but Andy was that kind of person. You know what I mean? That would, it, yes, it's it, true. I could see him doing that. I could you see know, it too. Because he just everything for everybody else. That's right. Walk into a room and walk out with a uh, shitload of friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way he was. Like I said, I know Andy different than a lot of other people know him. You know, like how Rob knows him, how right. Russ knows him. They all know him from the bars. I knew Andy from here. 
from the, the local bar hanging out. The, the Chicago Pizza Pub. Rest in peace, that place. <coughs> Excuse me, that place was great. Uh, the roller rink. The diner. You know, and just knowing Andy on a, on a different side. And he's the same person. And, and he brings that presence where, you know, you, you he brings happiness with him. Yes, always. You know what Absolutely I mean? No matter what the always. circumstances may be, he brings the happiness with him. And it was awesome, you know? It, it was. And I, I know even there were times when, you know, when he was having health issues or whatever, and he would post things on Facebook. So all of us would know when he would be resuming his tour and playing different shows again. And, you know, right. always love Andy, love Andy, love Andy, right. love Andy. Yep, and love Andy, yep, always. It's just, you know... Yep. I'll be back at Katie's of Smithtown on this day. I'll be at the rail this day. Yep. But and I'll be back. Love Andy. Yep. He would write that to me all the time on a, on a um on a, on a private message, you know. Love Andy, love Andy. Yeah, you know, he always made you feel good. That's for sure. He really did. You know, anybody out there I'd like to give us a shout, you know, eight seven seven nine one seven five two six three. You know, you got an Andy story, we love to hear it. You know Absolutely. Please share. Yeah. So. Just, that's what that's why we're here you know i i see people sharing pictures and and comments in in the group that that they had made in facebook on facebook and just if you want to share something with us now's the time to do it you know his family's listening it would mean the world to them right um and it means the world to everyone that that knew and loved him yes absolutely absolutely it's, it's and let's see i'm i'm seeing things that are coming up and um yeah you know, this, this system goes a little behind. I, I'm going slow too, but I did. I read the the note that Frank from Craving Strange mentioned. Okay. You know, um, we all miss him dearly. I have an Eric. I'm sorry if I say your name wrong. Eric Nudson. Um, Andy was truly an awesome person. I missed the hell out of him. Mm -hmm. um, I know my world band. R.I.P. Andy. Um, uh, let's see, a, a silly story. Um, Tommy shares, uh, Tommy McGuckin shares that um, the last time we saw Andy, they were joking, and Tommy said, check out the fox, and Andy smiled and gave Kate Fox two thumbs up. Right, right. And uh, I think he turned to Tommy and said, I need to get a girlfriend. <laughs> <Did> <laughs> no, you don't, Andy. You'll find the way you are. <laughs> <laughs> he was perfect. Um, let's see, I'm trying to... I remember when he was a boy at the drum center so long ago. He was there all the time. Um, when I saw him at the at the rail, he said, do you remember me? I was blown away. Miss him and love him always. Right. Wow. Yeah, it's just, I mean, he touched all of us. And, yes. and it's it wasn't just music. You know, that's the thing. While, while a lot of the friendships he he had were music based or right. started from music they all lasted because of who he was and what his right. personality was exactly and he brought he brought a lot of comfort to a lot of people you know a lot of support to a lot of people yes and the bands and it's just great to know him you know so come on guys i know there's somebody out there has got another story about him got to be absolutely everyone i mean jeez we all got him right I see you people watching. <laughs> you are watching us. We see you. We see you. We see you watching. You can't sneak in here. And... That was a great call from his uncle, huh? It's, I'm, I'm so pleased he called. And, yeah. And just, it gives us another perspective. Right. You know, we, we read the lovely things his father had to say. Yeah, yeah, that was um, unbelievable. And the, obviously, again, you had said it, they're, they're very, clearly very close yeah. family. Um, but just... Yeah, yeah. How lucky they were to have him, you know. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the loss. I really am. Yes, me too. Me too. And uh, you know, one day uh, we all will meet again. That's what they say. That's right. We're right. just hanging out here for a while. Yeah, hanging out. Hanging out. And I'm looking. Artie, I can't read the last name. Artie. Oh, I, I can't say that. I can't say your last name, Artie. <laughs> Give her gidja. Give her give her gidze. I'm sorry. I, I I'm her, not pronouncing. If you can't say it, there's right. no way I am. I know you can't. Andy was the best friend ever. Truly missed. Yes, he was. He was. Wow. Okay. It's just there are tons of comments. I know we missed some. Barbara. Barbara. He will be missed every. 
every year at the East Northport Festival yeah. as well. Yeah, you know, we love that. Um, and he did. He passed right before it this yeah. year. Yeah. And they did um, open the, the festival with a recording of him playing from the previous oh, year. They, okay, great. Yes. So great. They, they did pay tribute to him. Um, I know that really actually hit the Northport Festival quite the East Northport Festival um, quite hard because they had just announced that, you know, he was going to be opening it again and, yeah. you know, and that sort of left them with a little bit of a hole. Well, he actually made a post right before he passed saying, uh, yes, he was, yes, he's in the hospital, but he'll be at the East Northport Fair next week. Yes. He, so. he had gone to the doctor or. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And hmm. he he was looking forward to the festival. So right, right. It, it was only fitting that they did pay tribute. Um, right. And I know that um, Lisa and Michael and Lenny from the Rail, mm -hmm. um, you know, who sponsor the the music yep. fr from the festival, sure. they made sure to to really do a nice tribute to him. And they did. Everyone did. I mean, just to see the uh, the outpour of, of messages he got on his Facebook page. Oh, absolutely. You know, and just to see the people at his wake was oh my god. You know, you're not getting in there. No, it was it you know? was crazy, and I know. I know, like I said, you know, we we heard from Italy from John Macaluso yeah. and Liberty DeVito. Andy Passaretti was an angel sent here to test us. God called him home. R.I.P. My friend. Yeah. I mean, Andy was a rock star. Yes, he was. <laughs> he was a rock star. You know, I gotta say, you know, I didn't know him like a lot of these people knew him. You know, I again, I knew him. I knew him for years. Like I said, fucking for rolling right. or whatever. But you know. The impact he put on a lot of people. Yes. You don't realize yes. until like, like wow. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And uh, like I said, whenever I put up a drum thing, he was the first person to comment or whatever, you know? So, yeah, they will be missed. He will no be doubt. missed. He is missed. He will be missed. And, you know, we're all thankful for the impact he had on us. Yeah. And, you yep. know, Evil Knievel, Lightning Chasing. Yeah. Uh, you Who Loving, Thumbs Up. Um, it clearly, the light, you ever see those pictures he took? Yeah, I mean, those lightning pictures were outrageous. <laughs> they, were. they were crazy. They were absolutely crazy. Right? Oh man, you know, it's like there must have been a video that they just took pictures of, but they came out unbelievable. So, so um, do you want to wrap this up? You want to keep going? We uh, well, I, I'm. I know we we did have a few that we're going to call in, but I'm going to assume that they were tied up. Okay. Um, I mean, I think that if if it ever came down to it, we could do this again. We could absolutely, if, if anybody has something to add, um, reach out to us. Yeah, because I mean, it looked like we had a pretty good show tonight with this. A lot of people were, uh, were on. Absolutely. And, you know, well, a lot of people miss Andy. I mean, we don't have to, you know, we have, I know somebody with a studio. You know? <laughs> I know somebody, too. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it doesn't matter what time they go on. They don't care. They're, they're fine, but they're going on late. That's so, great. You know. So we can go as, as long as we want, as, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but we really and and I want to say to Andy's family, thank you for allowing us to do this. Yes, really. Uh, thank you for sharing the wonderful photos, um, and and video that you that you did share with us. It was it's it was a privilege yeah. to and, be permitted to do this. And be I know it was hard for them to do yes. it as well. Yes, you know, his sisters and his parents. You know, it must have been hard for his uncle to call. Absolutely. You know, we appreciate all you guys. You know, so. But it really. You know. Thank you all for, for, for your comments. Thank you for to those who called in. Um, thank you, everyone who shares something about Andy every day. It's, right. it's truly appreciated. Yeah, it really is. Great yeah. job, Kate. You, Great did, a, job, you, you did a wonderful job. Well, I want to thank you for joining the Kate Fox Show, uh, broadcasting out of Motorcycle Mayhem Studios. Yeah. And um, thank you to my co-host, Johnny Rizzo. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time, okay? Thumbs up. Bing. <laughs>